So hey everybody, welcome back. Look at this, we've got tomatoes. We are in the thick of tomato season. I'm so excited. So I'm Chris and you're gonna be seeing the loon real soon, I promise. We're bringing these babies in. So folks, when I last saw you, I said, I don't know, I hope we get tomatoes. We were kind of having a crazy spring. Well, folks, we've got tomatoes. They're beautiful. All of that love and nurturing that we talked about, um, that we did all the way back from early, early spring is really paid off. So let's talk about what we've got here. If you remember when we last saw each other, I was telling you we had an unusually cold April for here in North Texas to the point that it was it was like low 40s and that's really chilly and these tomato plants don't like that. If it ever gets to say close to 30 then you're going to need to do something to protect them. It's happened once before and we got up blankets out here and we covered them. You got to be careful um, and they survived. They were okay. Um, but what it did if you remember is it just slowed everything down and and you know I got them to my Facebook group and, and we all said yep we're all experiencing the same thing. Just be patient. Mother Nature is going to take over and it's all going to be okay. So then May came along. It was a beautiful May. It was very comfortable. Um, and then June came along. And let me tell you, I mean, it, summer in Texas is always hot. It came extra hot this year. It is, if you notice, I am dripping. That's supposed to be like 108 to the, today and we're in mid-July. It was like this all the way back in June. So I had all of these beautiful tomatoes. I was remember, if you remember, my beef steaks were, were not coming in when we last spoke. Well, they, they eventually started to come in. But when it got to be really hot, I was expecting them to start turning and to, to ripening and it just didn't happen. And once again, I got a little nervous, went on to my Facebook group and talked to my other gardening friends that I'd gotten to be really good friends with. Everyone was like, just relax. Mother Nature's going to take over. It'll happen. It's just, you know, the, the, the extreme heat makes things, it slows things down a little bit. First we had the cold, now we've got the heat. And um, sure enough, they started to turn. And it's interesting, um, you know, I've got a variety of plants here. The ones, the, my purple Cherokee heirloom came in first, and they're the ones that first started to ripen and turn that beautiful purple color. My beefsteaks, Obviously, you remember were the last to come in, but they came in beautifully. Um, they were the last to turn, and they've actually just now started turning. I've already um, picked, uh, I've, I've harvested probably anywhere from 25 to 30 already, and mind-blowingly delicious, so good. So we're gonna be picking these today. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the heat. When it gets that hot, obviously you're gonna need to make sure you are taking good care of your babies and they need water. And um, so what I would do, I mean, they need water all the time, but in this kind of heat, you've really got to take care of them. Take, keep an eye on them. I mean, with this extreme heat, the, the leaves are just gonna look a little distressed. I, I, I really did my best to keep them watered. You don't want to overwater them. Um, because if you do, I'll show you this right now. I, I, I think I overwatered um, my better boy hybrid here. They get, they just get these cracks in this like that. that that's a sign of, of, of getting too much water. And I just I didn't want them to, to, to suffer, but I probably overwatered them a little bit. But typically what you want to do, I do about a gallon of water per plant. Uh, you need, that's, I told you before, one to two inches of, of water per plant per week. That's a little hard to gauge. Um, so I used to do like a whole one of these for every plant and that was too much. They would all be cracked. So I did about a half of these. And again, it was, it was during, during this extreme heat. It wasn't just a, like a few days of extreme heat. We've had this continuously for like six weeks now. So it's, it's been brutally hot, um, but they're doing okay. The tomatoes can handle it. Um, they're not going to produce any more fruit when, once it starts getting hot like that. But um, they're, they're okay. They're, they're beautiful. So I've been really, really happy this year. My fortress has held steady. We've had no break-ins. I think this is the first year that some little varmint hadn't figured out how to get in there and eat up some of my tomatoes. They've just done really, really well. So I'm happy about that. One thing that you need to make sure that you really keep an eye on as far as in addition to the watering is look for for worms, insects that might be invading your plants. And there, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. There's something called a hornworm. Uh, sometimes they're tomato, tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms. Um, they're, they, they're green. The problem is that they are the ident they camouflage themselves and they look exactly the exact same green color as this. Once you spot them, you're like, wow, that's a pretty big uh, caterpillar. And uh, they will 
eat your plants. I'm telling you, I've heard stories of like someone didn't tend to their tomato plants and, and came back and within 48 hours, maybe even less, they just decimated. They love to eat these leaves and all and they're just, they're really a problem for your, uh, for your plants. So what I did is there's no need to kill them um, because I'll tell you why in just a moment. I just, you, there are those who will just will pick them up and relocate them. I'm a little squeamish, so I got a paper towel, and I just, they're not gonna bite you or squeeze onto you or anything like that. And I just took him back to our way back to our back fence and just let him go that way. He's not gonna get back in. Because then what happens is then they turn into these big, beautiful Carolina Sphinx moths. They're really big, um, but they're pollinators, and that's really, really good because tomato plants are self-pollinators. So sometimes to help with, to, to um, accelerate the growth or just to help help um, improve growth of the fruit, you can help them pollinate, help self-pollinate. Those little flowers, they have the male and the female parts, and so all you have to do is you go out there and you give them a little shake. That's an old wives' tale, but it really does work. We also talked last time that um, there's a tomato blossom set um, that's just a natural hormone in nature. You squirt that all over the, the, the blooms and the blossoms, and all of that combined helps to just nurture these tomatoes and you'll get beautiful fruit, which is what we had this year. So I can't emphasize enough the importance of looking out for these, for these worms. Here's the issue. They always make it a little difficult for you. They don't really like the sunlight a whole lot, so when they tend to gravitate towards your tomato plants is at night. Um, I do inspect them in the morning, I inspect them in the night, and that's when I did see the one during the daylight. But there's a little trick. Th this thing right here is called a UV flashlight. It just shines a UV light and it's like 10 bucks. I'll have a link for it. Uh, what that does is you just go out at night and you just look through all of your plants and it illuminates your plants in kind of like a purple hue. But those, if, you, if you've got the hornworms, they're going to illuminate and you're going to see them immediately and they're easy to, to discard up. Um, I was fortunate. I didn't, we went out several times and, you know, multiple times throughout the season, never saw one. Uh, just that one worm. And so I was fortunate that way, but something you definitely got to keep, keep an eye on. Okay, so... I mean, you guys, you see how beautifully they've grown. They're so big. They're so fantastic. Um, I think we're probably, this is it. I've got about, I've already harvested about 25. I've got about 25 to 30 more here. So I am going to pick some of these. It's, it's such a mixed emotion. It's like, I'm so excited, but yet I, I love grounding the corner and seeing these. Let me do this. They're so heavy. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Come on, baby. Oh, beautiful. All right, I'm gonna grab one of these over here. I'm gonna come back. Come on, baby. They don't wanna go. Beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful tomato? So beautiful. Okay. Speaking of big, beautiful tomatoes, I'm gonna to come back and pick the rest of these later, but I've gotta show you this one that's come in. I, I have never had a tomato <laughs> that is quite the size of this one, and you're gonna, I think you're gonna get a kick out of it. Okay, so, you guys, I'm gonna put this down. Look at this tomato. I'm gonna to need both hands to do this. It's like a pumpkin. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. They've got a little bit of the cracking down there, but that's normal, that's okay. These are gonna be beautiful, juicy, delicious. And um, we're gonna go inside now and we're gonna make something really delicious. And I guarantee you, then you're gonna see the loon. Look, I'm looking at, that's huge. And this is huge. This is 
I know. He's a mammoth. You guys, oh, um, I gotta do this. This is gonna be the best uh, tomato season ever. And you thought it was gonna be like a dud. I but, know. Oh. I, know. No, I was a little nervous just I because mean, of the crazy weather. I could see uh, uh, tomato tart in my future. <laughs> I can see tomato pie in my future. Heirloom salad. Oh, y'all. And. <gasps> The, the classic BLT. The BLT, You guys, so this has been a labor of love. <laughs> I mean, you guys have been with me from the beginning. You can see how easy it is. This, I got a big one here. <laughs> um, you want right. to switch? No. <laughs> okay. Here, toast. All right, let's toast. Yeah, yeah, here's to tomatoes. Here's to a wonderful Home tomato season. season. Let's Yay. hope they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> There is nothing bad. I'm gonna cry. I have to say it, but first I have to swallow. Well, this is 100,000 percent Luna proof. <laughs> Yay! Oh, you this guys, is amazing. I hope you've had a good time. Uh, you can do it. You know, wherever you live. Where we live in Texas right now, people are pulling, because these are about done, mm. and they're replanting, and so they can plant for fall. So, mm. you know, you can do this. You can do this. <laughs> I love you so much. Make, grow tomatoes. <laughs> Make us <a> free <laughs>